Housing Subcommittee. Today is February 24, 2020. This meeting is going to run from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Um, one second, I'm opening the agenda today. Hey, we're not going to start with a call to order. Um, Noah, can you? Yeah, I'm like, where are my minutes now? Okay. Uh, Booker. Here. Javier. Here. Alex. Here. Carol. Here. Chris. Not here. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Noah. So we have quorum to move forward. Um, approval of the minutes. Uh, everybody here was able to take a look to the minutes. Excellent. I see people nodding. Um, I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Okay, Carol second, Alex first. Uh, Noah, can you count it? Yeah. Um, Booker? Yes. Javier? Yes. Alex? Yes. Carol? Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to move uh, to item number two on today's agenda, which is public comment. Uh, public comment is going to, as usual, is going to be up to three minutes. Uh, when you're close to that mark, uh, Booker will remind you that you're close to your time, that you can sort of uh, finalize your thoughts, uh, and Booker will time it. Uh, just remember that, uh, in public I mean, this is, uh, this is up to the chairs, but uh, for purposes of the public comment, uh, we do not answer direct question in the public comment. Uh, if anybody has a quest direct question, feel free, please feel free to, we are still ha going to have one more public speaking session with the community. And also feel free to send emails to the member, uh, to members of the commission. So we're going to start uh, with a public comment. Uh, for public comment, please go, if you have the latest uh, version of Zoom, and you go down your screen in this section of reaction, if you click there, there's going to be the right hand feature. If you don't see it, you can... Um, if you feel comfortable, you can turn on your camera and raise your hand. If not, we can see how we can make it work. So we're going to start with public comment. Um, first person is the phone number ending in 5171. Thanks. Uh, it's Jane Doe again. Last night you were talking about disseminating a form to members of the public to solicit their input there's nothing on the website on the city your particular website so it's really difficult for us to figure out where to find that also for people that don't have broadband or devices i understood that the commission was going to set up protocols for the collection of testimony from these larger well larger or smaller swaps of anonymous and private people in the community that want to submit information but it's really difficult to find. And if it's difficult for someone who does have access to a device to find it, I can imagine how difficult it is for others. Six months ago, when you started this, I would have thought that there was some way to structure a way to collect this data more efficiently. Um, it's really a problem to try to do this at the end of the last three weeks. And yet, without those comments, and that testimony, you haven't done what you were tasked to do, which is listen to us and our experiences, and you don't have it documented to reference or cite. So it's really, really confusing and really an issue that I'm concerned about. So I hope you'll look into figuring out how you might resolve that or get the word out because you're really coming up against the end and you don't have a lot of other testimony by victims of crime, by officials that have had positive experiences with the police. It sort of just seems still really heavy on the side of people that have problems with the police department. So I just want to make sure that that is equitably researched. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to go to, we're going to go to the next person, which is Ed Olmsted. Ed, you're muted. There you are. Thank you. 
that. I just uh, I I was reading um, the Brattleboro Community Safety Review Process that was just published in December um, of 2020, and uh, I just uh, a couple of things struck me. Um, one one comment by a person from a who was identified as from a community organization giving input to the committee said. Uh, Families just need help. We're talking about families not having resources. Um, and they were talking about, I, I think they might have been referring to the Department of Children and Families as part of this. But I agree that, you know, I think that it's not just the families that sometimes just need help, it's also individuals. And um, I think when we're talking about mental health agencies, I hope that. A mental health diagnosis is not the determination of the help that people get. Diagnoses are helpful if you want to narrow down what it is that um, might be most helpful, what, what approaches might be most helpful. But I don't think mental health diagnosis should be a determination of help or the frequency of help or the payment to providers for help because individuals and families often just want, want some help. And you know, the other, one other thing that struck me, which I hadn't heard before in this report, uh, was uh, this uh, term called aggressive conspicuous patrol, talking about police officers. Uh, and as I understand it, just being present in a way that shows we're here watching you or we're here in you know, our presence, sort of like the the crews are on the side of the road, don't do anything because we're standing here. And that struck me as being a lot of, uh, having a lot to do with the complaints that many people have had about, especially if you're living outside or you don't, you know, you're, you're in a position where you don't, um, you know, you had, don't have enough privacy or you're identified as by the police in their discretion to, to do something because you're of the color of your skin or some other factor, clothing, car, whatever it might be. And it struck me between these two things that it certainly is more, it, the person that if police in Northampton are doing this conspicuous aggressive patrol, it's hard to switch between that and being able to just be there and listen to somebody, understand what their problem is and provide what that person or family or a couple needs. So I just want to share those thoughts. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank, you so, thank you so much, Ed. Um, any other person? Uh, okay, uh, Yap Ping. Hello. Um, well, uh, first, I just wanted to thank you all for um, everything that you have done to collect testimony, because I, I think from being in a lot of the meetings, I've seen that you all have been working really hard from the beginning and trying to figure out how to do that. And it seems like there's some pretty hard um, constraints on the process because of the way um, this commission has been constructed with um, open meeting law and the ways that you're able to work. Um, so. From, from my perspective, witnessing a lot of the meetings, I saw you all working really hard from the beginning to do that. And I appreciate that. And I think, um, you know, there was also a lot of advertisement about public hearings. And I, I have heard a lot of people who have had direct experiences um, with being policed in different ways by the police and by social services come forth. And also the Wildflower Alliance um, submitted some really great testimonies. Um, so I wanna thank you all for the work that you have done around that um, given, given all the constraints. Um, and I wanted to share a really sort of small personal example um, that it, it's, it's, not a big, it's not a big thing, but I, I had a physical the last week. It was an online physical. And before I had the physical, someone else from the office called and so they were gonna send me a, um, a depression survey. And um, I just wanted to share my experience as someone who hasn't really had to fear being institutionalized, even though I, I've been close with a lot of people who have and have witnessed how 
traumatizing that is, but I've also always been in the role of being a friend to someone and, you know, just hearing a lot of stories from friends over the last couple of years and then, you know, being in these, witnessing these commission hearings and thinking about alternatives. Um, I just wanted to share that like as a patient filling out that survey, I immediately felt like, ooh, if I did identify with any of these checklists, like, I don't think I would want to tell my, like, I don't know what's going to happen to me. And I just had this sense of like, I could get in trouble. And like, I don't know if I can trust what would happen if I did fill out these questions in a certain way. And just that it was a very visceral feeling from me as someone who doesn't really have to worry about, I don't feel like I really need to worry about anything happening because I just so happened, didn't feel the need to answer the questions in a way that I thought would get flagged. But but it just highlighted for me the power dynamic. And so I hope, you know, I think you all are thinking about this, but in thinking about alternatives, I'm, I'm really interested in the ways that structures can be set up so the person on the other line doesn't have the power to, or doesn't feel the need because of their job description to report someone to any agency. Um, yeah, but I know you all are thinking about that. It was just a funny personal thing that came up for me in the last week that highlighted that. Okay, thanks. Your time is up. I'm assuming if your doctor is a Bay State medical physician, you were given the what's called a PHQ-9, um, which we actually have to do on an annual basis because of federal regulations that we are asked to screen for depression. So, uh, um, and I, uh, just to make a comment here, if you look at the bottom of the <laughs> form, it's paid for by Pfizer. Um, so, it's, um, and I actually disagree with its efficacy as a depression screening tool, but that's what it is. Um, Alex? Um, I would just note, I think we're not supposed to respond during public comment. Um, <laughs> anyway, so it's there are anybody else who would like to speak um, on, during public comment? Excellent. Um, I just wanna, so uh, taking advantage that we have public here, if you go to the Northampton City website, on the top part says Northampton, Massachusetts, next to it is the link to the to government. You click in government, and after that you go to departments. If you go to the last uh, department uh, named there, it's, it's the Northampton Police Review Commission. If you click there, that's where you find the form. Again, you go to the landing page of the Northampton uh, uh, website for the city, government, departments, and you're going to find a uh, Northampton Police Review Commission link to the form. Um, as far as I know, we didn't, um, this, we, we were, we're not the ones managing the website, so we're not the ones deciding where that information. But I, I, I appreciate everybody for today's public comment, and I'm going to pass the chair to Booker. The, um, I purposely wrote our agenda in a general way because um, a lot of moving parts are going on. We completed public comment. I had a line in for guest speakers. We do not have guest speakers. Um, and instead I made as our next agenda item, preparation of documents for the final report, including mental health services, domestic violence services, and harm reduction services. Um, so that's what um, our next agenda item is. Um, before we engage in that, do people have thoughts about how they would like to move on to that item? Or are there thoughts or concerns? We've had a lot that happened in our meeting last night. Um, and I could certainly understand if people have thoughts or comments based on the, the discussions we had last night. Carol. I'm not making a comment on the final report outline or how to approach it, but I did want to ask a question about whether I whether I could make an announcement, a relevant announcement sometime during the agenda. 
Um, I'm comfortable with your doing that now if you're. Okay. All right. I just wanted to draw um, commissioner's attention to the bill that uh, Representative Di Sabadosa has uh, introduced at the State House uh, with three other uh, co sponsors, but she's a lead. Um, it will provide us, if it does pass, um, both houses and gets signed by the governor, it will provide grants uh, to entities such as municipalities that are partnered with nonprofits, um, et cetera, to create alternatives to policing. You know, it's a very heavy emphasis on civilian responses in the models. Um, certainly looks like something that we want to follow. And um, I'm just hoping that, um, you know, my intention is to um, do what I can to see that it's passed because it's a certainly a wonderful funding source for cities such as ours. And by the way, Noah posted, if you haven't seen it, uh, Noah posted the bill in the last day or two. Yep, I think back. Alex just posted it in the chat. Yeah, piggybacking from what Carol is doing, that's one of the things that the ACLU is also working on. That one is the uh, Rep. Sabadosa and Senator Chang Diaz, the ones doing it, the HD 3807 uh, and SD 2342. It's, to, it's literally to create a grant program to provide a non-police response to mental health crisis and other emergencies that do not require a criminal system involvement which resonates a lot, mm -hmm. hugely, I would say. You can grab that sentence and put it in what we're doing here. So it's really encouraging. Right. Alex? Um, yeah, I wonder if <clears throat> we could add that into the report to, um, to you know, the recommendation to encourage, to support that bill. Uh, so, you know, the city council can pass a resolution in support of it. Um, and in general, people can advocate. Before we entertain uh, um, a making a decision, um, I was really impressed by the legislation. I also read it today. It specifically also requires that um, no law enforcement uh, people can have a part in the grant. So it specifically rules out sort of what happened with the um, reformative justice um, grant that already exists, which is being run through the police department. Um, I, I have to say I was really um, impressed by that bill, which led me to go see what else has um, Sabadosa done. And um, she has championed a number of bills She's way ahead of us, um, Frank, oh, pardon me. She's way ahead of me in terms of um, what kinds of things she's actually been putting out in terms of looking at alternatives to policing and reducing the carceral state and some other things. So I think there are a number of bills that she's already filed um, along with others, some of which are in partnership with the ACLU. So I was actually quite impressed and I hadn't seen that until I, started doing more research after reading about this new bill. Um, Alec, um, I think, Alex, are you suggesting that we might make as part of our document a recommendation that support by the city council or should that be a separate thing? Yeah, that that, that be an element of our report um, because he, this is, you know, funding is obviously a huge issue. And this is uh, one of the things I think we'll, 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 we'll be recommending. Uh, so, uh, you know, getting getting that su support for funding would make a big difference. Okay. Um, are there further comments about the announcement that Carol made? I am so glad you made the comment, Carol, because I wanted to bring it up too. Are there any other comments that people want to make before we begin to engage with um, um, what we would like to have placed in the final report. Javier. <clears throat> so to, to, yeah, today, Jesus Christ, my, my week has been crazy. Today, 
uh, me, Carol, n Nick, uh, went to a meeting, uh, Rachel Bumber uh, meeting, he called a meeting with people working, there were people from Kahoot and other organizations all across the US and also Canada. And it's, you know, many times when we have been doing this, we feel that we're in this little island and it's hard to relate to anybody else. Being in a meeting with how many people? 45, maybe? 58 like, at, at the most, yeah. 58 people in every, every one of those working really hard, either implementing and rating, working this kind of system, uh, or deploying a pilot program right now, or starting to think about it like the same way how we are doing it. Um, they are planning to hold meetings in general, and so in the, in, independently would be interesting to 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 follow that because I think it is going to be a lot of uh, interchange material between the ten. It sounds exciting, Javier. Are, were there messages from the meeting other than excitement that you think we should specifically perhaps add to what we're working on for the, in the next two or three weeks? Well, most, most, most was literally introductions. Each person went around introducing themselves, saying what, they, what, what their work was and what they, in which point they were with these kind of models alternatives to policing models, and that's it. There was not conversation, there was no interaction, just people introducing themselves. This is what I'm doing, this is where we are. And went fast, it was really good. There were some suggestions from some of the programs that there's data, that they have some good data. Uh, that when they just anecdotally were, were, were um, speaking on the screen in this introductory meeting, about their programs that have existed for either either they're either launching right now or they've been in in you know in place for like three years i mean obviously cahoots has been around longer than that and many of the programs in canada as well as us are modeled after that variations on staffing models and so forth but the ones who that have been in place for a while even a couple of years are reporting um really very low risk in terms of operating completely without police. And, you know, they've got good data, which, you know, I, we took notes on it. There's, you know, a whole network. We have emails for all these people. We can, we can be in touch with them, you know, and, and, and problem solve around the, the program development. Mm. Did, well, I'm, I'm curious, was there any discussion about forming something like what we were discussing last, last night about actually having a new department of safety or some parallel or equivalent? So there were no discussion about it, but we Mentioned. learned, yeah, we learned, they there were several parts in the country in Canada that they mentioned that they either are already deploying that and they had been running for, you know, for months, for a year, uh, to people who are transitioning from the planning part to the pilot program. Okay. I think the Denver program took two, there, I have, have to look at my notes, but on how long it took to launch these from the uh, original police review commissions in these towns until they had a launch and runs about two years for some, although some of them got up and running, you know, quicker than that, which seems hard to believe, but that's what was reported. Well, that's a little, I, I feel like I'm taking what Alex would say is sort of, are they talking about how much time to scale up, how much time to begin a pilot program, how much time to begin real programs? I think it depends on the context of the city, mm. you know, and how hard it, 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 it has been in some cases to get a, a new department going. Mm. Yeah, that's, I think my guess is that some of the, some of the cities that took a couple of years to get launched, you know, had a lot of bureaucratic machinations to get, you know, to get a new department going. Yeah, they, I mean, uh, we, I have notes and I can share with, with, with the subcommittee. Yeah. 
Good. Um, based on what you heard, how do you think that might inform your recommendations to the rest of us for what we recommend? I would say uh, I can see it. Ha I mean, uh, that's the reason what I mentioned that working in a silo in this way that we're working, we it's hard to see how this is going to play out. Okay. The way how people talk in that meeting, it does play out and it, it is possible, mm -hmm. functions, works, and makes a difference. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree, that was my impression. I, I left that meeting very being very hopeful. There were just, so, there are so many cities developing along these lines. Are there further comments or thoughts about this particular topic before we move on. Are there any other thoughts before we begin to talk about um, how we would like to contribute our updated thoughts about towards the final report? Um, I flippantly suggested that we could say that all of the things that our committee has talked about could represent part of the final report in terms of specific recommendations um, that we would like to have occur. Um, I, before I, we go further, I have a sense that um, we should not necessarily be thinking about a new department, but instead here are the alternatives to policing. We would like whatever occurs in the future would occur. Um, and, I'm, I, and I'm wondering if we should just say, okay, let's talk about, here's what we would like the mental health response to be. Here's what we would like um, substance abuse response to be um, guidelines around domestic violence response. Um, are you all there or should we do this in a different way? Yes, Javier. C can you um, go a little deeper into your reasoning for not talking about the department, but talking about the specifically the services? I don't want to do that as the chair of the current discussion. Um, I could do that, but I have a sense that the thinking about the construction of the department might occur in a different setting than this committee. And instead what we would have our inputs to that committee. Now, I think um, we have Cynthia and Dan and Josie are here and they might weigh in on this um, if they're comfortable with that. But I guess I just wanted to first hear how we all thought about this and how we wanted to approach it. Hmm. Yes, Alex. One of the key elements of a department or, or even an office or, you know, is, is the accountability question. Mm. Um, and that, so whatever structure and ends up being recommended, you know, having those, uh, those accountability structures in place seems essential. Um, I also got learned some more information about, um, perhaps why a lot of the contracts with the social service, service agencies, uh, why there isn't a lot of accountability. And that's that those contracts, the city doesn't hold those contracts. They are with the state. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I talked with someone uh, in, the, in the mayor's office recently who suggested that state advocacy is going to be needed to, to get the, these agencies to, um, actually report to the city and, and be accountable to the city because otherwise the city can make requests but essentially the state pays them and they are accountable um, to the state 
so that that that's a barrier there um so the things you know the, <clears throat> what, basically yeah whatever structure we we come up with to to try to to recognize those barriers to accountability and ensure that accountability is is a part of of it and that the, the department um you should should seems to to be a way to to move toward that thank you for that information though it's formidable um is the word that's passing through my head um, now i mean as part of our recommendations you know we, there we may have we, the city may implement new contracts directly with with different providers mm -hmm. and then they would be accountable to the city um, if the city is the one footing the bill so uh, uh or you know and i think as more recommended uh is that that they be the people providing the services be city employees um but if even if that can't be then then you know there could be more accountability because of of who's paying Coming back to the kinds of work that Ms. Zabadosa is doing, is this kind of thing stuff we should be asking the state to change the nature of the contracts or the nature of the accountability, or is that outside of our scope? Yeah, I, I think that that's an important, at least to suggest, suggest a discussion um, with our representatives. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Carol, you had a question. Yes, a point. Um, I'm not sure what's gonna come out of my mouth other than um, the historically crisis contracts that were um, responded to mental health crises in town were for a long time, uh, the state contracted with ServiceNet. And during that period of time, when I was working as a therapist in this town on my own, um, I observed a lot more um, peer, there was a little more peer involvement um, through ServiceNet and, and, you know, in, in terms of, and, you know, at some point DMH, uh, Department of um, Mental Health was, was seeing fit to enlist peers with lived experience uh, on, on some interventions. At some point, and I don't remember when it was, probably in the 90s or around the turn of the 21st century, the state pulled all their crisis contracts across, you know, across the Commonwealth and recontracted them. And I, you know, I never read the, the RFP, so I don't know what they were prioritizing, but they shifted uh, all the crisis contracts for this area to CSO. Um, and so getting back to what Alex was saying, you know, I think it really is behooves us to pay attention to this and work with, um, Lindsay uh, Sabadosa in her office around, um, you know, how to do this dance because there may be other, you know, within say a hypothetical new department of community care, whatever its name is, um, that may have some uh, programming that's not typical contracted professional, you know, ma master's level clinicians, you know, they, they may be, you know, crisis workers, crisis specialists or peer specialists and so forth. Um, and, and those contracts, you know, would be, I, I expect, uh, if they're developed through that new department would be more accountable to, um, to the city. And, you know, one of the things, one of the measures, I think, or metrics to look at, you know, it, has this been a good idea, these new approaches is just, plain satisfaction surveys from people who um, who are in community where where there are these new these new civilian teams going out to respond and obviously cost is another one um, and the extent to which the police I think some of the cities that we heard about today in the meeting that Javier was mentioning um, are are tracking, um, the amount of reduction of policing that is occurring in the cities. In other words, a replacement with, with these civilian responses, you know, one of the metrics that gets measured in the first year or two is how much can they reduce the use of police on some of these calls? Yeah. 
Yes, Javier. I mean, we need to be careful here. Um, I, I, I understand the need of, of saying that there has to be legislative change at state, at state level, right? In my experience, many, many times that's used by local elected officials to not do anything and just say, let's wait, let's see what they do. That was one of the one of the things that happened with the omnibus bill, with the with the policing bill, uh, and with many other uh, pieces of legislation. So, I would say yes. We it. I think it's good to point out that late change is the kind of change that we want because it's lasting. But this is what needs to happen now. Even better if along the way this passes because the reality is that and also i want to mention this is really it's really it's not common for a piece of legislation to pass the first year of the first legislative session in massachusetts so i just want to put that in your in your minds good point mm -hmm. yeah are are there more you know i i um I'm trying to ask, are there more comments about this? You know, I think it's going to be, I've always thought that Northampton isn't going to do any, all of this work we're hoping to have occur. Um, Northampton can't be the only entity in the region doing this work. So in a sense, there needs to also be a, some kind of thoughtful regional response. Um, this is the issue with housing and um, it likely will also have an impact on terms of response for mental health related calls and wellness calls and other things. Um, and I, I guess then it begins to make more sense that if the state is involved with the payment structure, how we will look at things will be part of that. But it, it I guess we just need to be explicit in what we ask for and what we recommend um, with the, with the knowledge that there are larger structures involved. So I don't know. Are there other thoughts about this issue? I, by the way, Javier, thank you for saying what you said. We, this shouldn't limit us mm -hmm. right. from going forward. Um, one more thing. Um, <laughs> I, I hate to be sort of a party pooper, but even uh, when, when we talk about sort of, they should be a regional answer to this, right? Sort of a, a, a collective word regionally to not to change things systemically f in each community, but also to push a legislator to act. That's 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 a no brainer, right? The reality, and this was uh, one of my comments in one of our last full commission meetings. Um, as somebody who worked with elected officials and municipalities across the Commonwealth specifically in Western Mass has been extremely difficult because you run into all this narrative of my police department. My police department is the most progressive police department ever. And that's, that's, that's a commonality among many, many towns and cities in Western Mass. Many. Uh, and and in, in, in a lot of cases, all the advocacy work that is being done to sort of to to start sort of the, the conversation that we have here right now has been impossible. I mean, I think that from that point of view, compared with other municipalities, uh, Northampton is ahead of the game mm -hmm. because we at least can have this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but in other, in other, in other towns, uh, it's not the case. So it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Are there other thoughts about this before we move on to beginning to look at document work? Alex. Uh, also not to be a party pooper. Uh, <laughs> uh, something I, I have Come on, you guys. concerned about um, is, is a certain amount of, cre of lack of credibility that I feel um, that there's still organizations 
that we are doing this work currently that we haven't reached out to, or we haven't successfully gotten here. Maybe we've reached out. Um, and so that is, that is a concern. And, um, you know, we need to hear, it's very informative uh, to hear how people are currently, currently doing uh, <clears throat> work. And um, so I, I hope that that, uh, you know, I, I think we, we have, I've made some suggestions, other people have made suggestions. And um, if, if perhaps it doesn't make sense to have them in the meetings, just then for us each to, to have conversations individually, to, to, to call up people and just have a, as long of a conversation as we can, um, <clears throat> would be another way to, to do it, given the time that we have. Um, and I can give specifics if you want, but I think I think many of them are are known. Alex, can you mention? Sure. So, um, for example, uh, you know, Nelquip was um, invited and hasn't come yet. Um, yeah. Safe Passage, um, <clears throat> Hampshire Hope, uh, uh, Jess Tilly uh, harm reduction, um, the uh, with the Resilience Hub, um, uh, the Community Action. And um, uh, there's another person, uh, Mana Food Food Kitchen, Lee Anderson, um, and uh, so those are some some examples. I mean, we've done, we've also reached, you know, gotten some good good data from from people directly involved. I think our our housing first and mental health um, <laughs> is is good. Um, so that's, but. Uh, that, that's sort of my concern there and um, mm -hmm. and also how late it is in the, the outreach the outreach form and I don't know how much you know we're getting back already um, <clears throat> but um, just yeah trying to spread the word about that as much as possible make that accessible Carol do you think we could just uh, discuss right now? who's going to do follow up on some of these organizations. Because you know, it is true that we've posted, um, you know, that the outreach committee generated um, a form and a consent form and it's posted in various places. But it, I, think, I think the point is well taken tonight that uh, we need to do some follow up and, and just say, have you seen it? You know, um, this is how you submit it, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think that's that's sort of a. I mean, if if you want to do individual outreach, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm making my list. Yeah, and, and that's for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm I'm assuming that everybody has been talking with people during the entire time of this commission. Mm -hmm. At least I have been do, doing it, and. And in general, in those conversations, sometimes it's complicated because, as we know, um, they may be organizations that they would like to come here to talk about um, the, uh, how they would like in an, in an ideal situation, how they would like to do things. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that many times a lot of these programs that we're talking about are uh, grants that are based from the DA office of the police department. So if, if I'm managing an organization that is doing this and part, part of my funding comes from there, I, I may be willing to have a private conversation with you, but I'm not going to go to a, to a subcommittee or to a meeting, public meeting, to tell to say something against my own interest, even though I would like to support what you're doing because I think it's the right thing to do. But I'm not going to jeopardize my own organization. So we have to be thoughtful about that, too. Um, so, um, and in, in relation to, to, to the, the, the outreach documents and all that talk time, because, and I'm going to be really frank with you, the commission didn't really care for, for the first hearing, public hearing about bringing affected voices. I, if you go and you take a look to the prick meeting of that, I spent almost 20 minutes trying to redirect the conversation and the commission was more interested about, oh, we should come with questions. So we can ask people questions. People can talk to us based on questions. That was a fact. And after that, in between 
the first and the second big uh, public hearing, uh, the outreach com committee subcommittee was created, and we and we were really hard to get things done. Mm -hmm. So if if the form, the online form, and the hard copy form came out uh, a week ago, was literally because we were really hard to get it done. Mm -hmm. The limitation of the open law meeting. The limitation of have not not being able to do uh, to do collaborative were outside the specific meeting. We had to be cognizant of that, right? But the reality is that there there was an issue in the commission early on at the beginning, until I would say a couple of a month, two months, uh, one month before uh, the second hearing, where there was not interest to talking about how to bring affected voices. Mm -hmm. So, so by the way, I, I'm going to highlight what Javier said that certain affected voices, um, we have to find ways that it's safe to get their voices in, though they might feel threatened by getting their voices in. This is actually also true of <clears throat> some of the organizations we've invited to speak to us who feel constrained um, for other, they're willing to talk with us off the record, but not on record. So, um, and that's what we're talking about now is not theoretical, it's real. So, um, I'll, I'll just say that. Uh, so can I, um, how do we, where do we go from here? And I, I guess what I really want to ask is, so um, I'm going to make a statement. So the Brattleboro report is all based on really careful work of interviewing lots of people affected by police. And it's very rich for that. Um, it's less rich in terms of talking to organizations and, and uh, other things. Um, and I was personally disappointed by the quality of the recommendations that were made, made for change. Um, so uh, um, I think some of the things we're thinking of it are way more rich than what they came to. Now, I guess what I want to really ask um, is how much more public, I, I agree, I feel that we do not have enough information, for instance, about domestic violence response to make meaningful recommendations. I think we're pretty rich with mental health response, both from the police chief and from agencies that we've spoken to. Um, we have not directly spoken with people who are doing harm reduction work. Um, though I think there's a history from groups such as Tapestry and other organizations that we can draw on and recommend further holding them up. Are there other voices that we need to have in place to make recommendations for alternatives to policing. And I'm asking this as a question of for focus and what should we really try to get? Yes, Javier. Um, I have a question, I mean, based on your question, I have a question for Dan. Uh, Dan? I, I, I'm just wondering who has get, gotten in touch with, uh, with Dan in conferring as a speaker. So you're talking about for um, for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, whoever has gotten in touch with you uh, to be a speaker. Yeah, so far, just, um, just Tilly uh, for yeah. March 2nd. We haven't heard, well, we heard back from Cherry Sullivan that she needed to check with her supervisors and hasn't responded yet. Can you remind me the topics that those two individuals will touch if they present? Uh, so that was um, substance use and harm reduction. Uh, they both do um, do that sort of intervention work, um, but in very different ways. 
Okay. Thank you so much. Well, you know, I think we should, I mean, proactively, we, we have to have at least one, uh, a person talking about domestic violence. I mean, we have to. And, you know, we have tried. Uh, haven't been possible, but we need to keep trying. Can I ask the Booker what uh, what the response was when you talked with uh, Nelquit? Um, I'm not going to discuss that here. Okay, that's fine. Other thoughts? Well, I, I'm just thinking that my experience in reaching out um, to Safe Passage and women, uh, Center for Women and Communities that, you know, the uh, response was understandable that uh, in the survivor community and in agencies and organizations working to support survivors, there really isn't an option for just reaching out and saying, wouldn't you like to come and testify or wouldn't you like to share your experience? Because it's all, it's all, the anonymity is critically important from a security perspective. So I think that there is a cultural, it's not so much stru structural, but cultural barrier to our doing too much around the, in these areas. I mean, we might like to, but I mean, I think that what I was told when I made phone calls is that the best option was to post that, that, you know, that one, what we call the one pager and let individual survivors decide whether they wanted to submit something. And, you know, I don't think there is really an option for having someone even necessarily from the agency coming and speaking with us. So, you know, that's just my sense. And, you know, I, I want to respect that. Um, and, and personally, in terms of DV responses, yeah, I really don't think that even if we talk with someone from one of the agencies that we're going to be in any kind of position to make a recommendation for making much change in the way that domestic violence gets responded to, you know, the practice currently, I, I may not like it. I may not like the current model you know, on some level, but I don't, I don't think we're in a very good position to make much of a recommendation to change from the existing model. Alex. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do think we're not ready to, to make a recommendation about uh, like in immediate action steps, but I do think we have um, a wealth of, of examples um, of what other communities have done. And it's usually a longer term process to build, build up those, those alternative responses that are a choice that, that people can make um, and, and also work to reduce, reduce the, the culture of, vi of violence, violence prevention work. Um, and so we can provide that list, you know, we can provide the research uh, and say the recommendation is continue to study these and look at uh, you know in a year what we what we may be able to do you know we don't have to have and we we can't have all the answers given the 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 constraints we've been working under um, but what we can do is say as identify the areas that continued work should be do should be and that that there should be. Um, a paid staff to do that work, to do mm -hmm. that research, to do, you know, that like I, in, in looking at how, you know, some other um, communities have, have approached this, I, I really feel like the way that we, we were just sort of like, let's get a group of volunteers uh, and throw them at this. And um, I think, you know, we, we did, admir we've done admirably well in that, <laughs> uh circumstance but 
we needed uh, and need a lot more support. Thanks, Alex. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Are there other things that we've, oh, I'm sorry, Javier, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Alex that we don't, you know, we don't need to have all the answers. If, and one of, one of the tasks from a new department can be to, to look into this in a more sort of, you know, uh, professional way. And, and, you know, sometimes it's different when the, the, the head of the, of the department of community care department getting to with the organization that has more swag that, you know, somebody from the street like us, like trying to reach out to these people. Right. Um, I, I just want to highlight that Ed Olmsted talk about the women's shelter, Compañeras. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the website and I know, I know a couple of people that work there. Um, I can try to get in touch with them. They are in Holyoke. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot them an email tonight. Thank you so much, Ed. Mm -hmm. Are there other aspects of the recommendations we want to make that we feel that we need more input before we could make recommendations? So what I'm really asking is, I think we have a lot of information about mental health. Cynthia has posted in the chat that um, Nick Fleischer told his committee last night that he reached out to CSO and the director of crisis intervention who was willing to meet or write a statement. Um, we could make a decision if we wanted to call on that. Um, uh, though I think we have a pretty rich public witness around mental health calls that we can call on. Um, um, I agree that we are not where we would like to be with domestic violence. Um, by the way, I, reading the Brattleboro report, I think despite a lot of rich work they did, they also weren't sure about what to do there. Um, um, it would be good to have more information about substance abuse response. Are there other do we feel, for instance, like we know enough about making recommendations about making homelessness, trying to work on homelessness as a less than a police issue instead? Do we feel that we have enough information about that? I'm only seeing up and down head shaking, so. Okay. Um, are there, yes, Carol. Yeah, just to go back to uh, substance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much overlap uh, with mental health issues. I mean, there's, there's literature on this about, and you know, I can speak to this anecdotally that, you know, where somebody is chronic user of substances for self-soothing or self-medicating, there's, almost inevitably some underlying mental health issues too. So I don't think we need to, when, in terms of talking about responses or organizing into a new department or new response teams, I'm not sure that we need to really articulate a whole other section, section that just speaks to the needs of people in the community who are vulnerable because they have substance issues. Because um, I think I think we can, any response could, could come out of the same kind of response to mental health crises. That's just my sense. Well, I've been hanging out in this world too um, for a long time, for many decades. So um, the, you know, if you had to do a Venn diagram, it's, it's, it's pretty overlapping. I'm not going to do a discussion with you about the proper approach to a dual diagnosis patient. And whether why not? Do... I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> well, that's why I, I don't want I to talk said, about When it. I presented years ago, 20 years ago, when I presented to a 
Springfield agency on dual diagnosis. They wanted to know, I said, look, on a, on a bad day, I qualify for about four diagnoses. So what is this dual thing, you know? Well, by the way, this ties into domestic violence too. Um, and that part of my teaching is um, <clears throat> substance use and mental health disorders probably are comorbid conditions also within the setting of domestic violence frequently. Um, but the problem with our approach was, when, well, first you have to deal with the substance use and the mental health issues before you talk about the domestic violence. And that, which was wrong, it was wrong, but that's sort of how we were trained to think about it. But, you know, it just shows how complex these things are. And by the way, and this is part of the reason why I'm passionate about these issues is that this is just sort of something I experience for the people I care for and think about and worry about. So um, are there other issues that we feel that we need to collect more information about? We need, there is, there, we will always need to collect information. And even if we got to the point of here's what's going to happen, more information will need to be collected. And we need to be Part of what I think we're going to need to make in our comments is information that needs to be collected on an ongoing way to understand what we're doing. But I'm, I'm asking again for the sake of a report. So let's move to what should we now be preparing to submit and I, I guess the question I want to ask all of you is, we have the final report outline that um, Dan and Cynthia have submitted to all of us. Um, would we like to work through that for, um, I'm sorry, not, I think our, as a subcommittee, it's making recommendations. I'm, I'm pulling this up on my screen and I'm not sure I wanna screen share it yet, but I'm, um, it, in his report, maybe I will screen share, pardon me. not letting me do it, sorry. So one of the aspects um, is sort of specific suggestions about alternatives to policing. And I think that's what as a subcommittee, we should be making specific recommendations. Um, here it is. And I think we also need to think about what do we want to contribute to the appendices in terms of references for why we're making these recommendations in data. Um, are there thoughts about that? I'm, I'm sort of running ahead, but I, yes, Alex. Um, my thought is just to, to take our, our report from the preliminary report, uh, make updates and then divide it with you know, the section six policy procedure alternatives recommendations, sort of the summary of recommendations is there and then take other parts of it and put it in the appendix, in an appendix about that, that people can refer to so that, so that we have, you know, sort of in a readable, um, accessible form um, and relative, somewhat brief form, uh, the, there's our, our recommendations and then um, more detail and, and especially, um, you know, resources and references uh, in the appendix. Are there other thoughts about that? What Alex is recommending? Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. I think if we start pulling in <clears throat> in the body of our discussion about rec or recommendations. If we start pulling in um, who we consulted with and recommended, you know, 
across uh, other models. Um, it's, I think the reader either zones out or doesn't like get the argument that is vital in the policy and procedure on the alternatives recommendation section. So I think you do need to move some of that to the... To the, what was the very to the last thing? To the appendices, you have to Thank move you. some of the, you know, why, you know, what's it, basically what's what's the data, whether it's anecdotal or quantitative data, you know, what, you know, and who we, who we talked with, what we saw, what we read, you know, that, that needs to go towards the end, I think. You make a passing reference to it in the policy and procedure alternatives recommendation section, but it's um, the listings, the more specific references are at the end. Um, Alex, would you be willing to do a document that would insert our recommendations from the preliminary report into this document? Um, then I'm going to ask for volunteers for putting together the appendices that would um, also go into the, well, the, what would go into the appendices of the document. And also we need to come up with a list of the names of people who've talked with us about a number of these issues. I've actually already begun doing that. Um, um, it's just sort of people who've been speaking with us on a frequent basis and also specific individuals who've talked with us or fed us information about organizations and other things. In other words, I'm asking for volunteers to take on different parts, aspects of moving information into this format. Uh, I can help with, with that, uh, Booker. For the annotation okay for the appendix type information yeah okay. alex would you be willing to move stuff from our progress our other report into this or do you, would you prefer uh, something different well i'd like to think about our the timeline and um also not uh, so are we going to try to, so I, I don't remember uh, the timeline, but I know we were to try to release uh, some sort of draft prior to our March 6th public hearing. Mm. I believe that was a goal. Um, and, you know, if our next meeting or our next full commission meeting is the second, it just, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to happen. Okay. Um, and so we can, you know, possibly schedule some sort of you know, like daytime work session again. What I'm concerned with is that I would pick certain things and then would those necessarily be this, the things that other people, like we wouldn't necessarily move all the, someone else might not move the other thing, might choose something else to move into the appendix. Um, so there needs to be some, either one person who's just going to kind of move it and then do their do a draft or we need to work together. Yeah. Um, Dan, may I ask you a question or Cynthia? Um, Cynthia, you have you're saying yes, sort of. Um, when would you like this report? When would you like information from us? Yeah. Um and Dan, jump into great question. I think um, uh, Alex brought up a good point about the public hearing. We were thinking of having a document for the public to react to, but that document does not have to be anything precise um, with language and wording. It might be more on the um, in the direction of the consensus document that we've been playing with for a while. So just just letting the public know a particular direction. 
um, and also maybe a potpourri of different options. So I wouldn't worry about that deadline. Um, but Dan and I were gonna meet um, to talk about, okay, now that we're closer, when do we need a draft? So I, um, I, I don't have that uh, date in my head right now, but I think as soon as we can get it, you know, what you're talking about tonight is just perfect. You know, starting to pull together the pieces. You may have a real rough draft by next week, and that would be great for us to begin plugging in to the final report, if that makes sense. Dan, I don't know if you had any other comments to that. Yeah, um, pretty much to echo at this point, I think it would be just be like what we send out would be sort of the executive summary of what we've done um, so far as a commission. <laughs> So that, you know, people maybe have a better idea of what we are and who we are, um, you know, and to, to guide some of that discussion. Um, in terms of the final report um, and, and Booker, we haven't had a chance, uh, Josie is going to reach out to you soon, um, is to start doing sort of the joint meetings where spending and contracts can talk about what recommendations and all those sorts of so we can get to the budgetary part because you know the that that subcommittee is sort of reactive <laughs> to what the recommendations are. Okay. Um, so maybe doing some um, some sort of like joint meetings. Um, we do have to talk a, about um, open meeting law and making sure that. Um, having too many commissioners at a time doesn't violate um, doesn't violate that. So, um, waiting for confirmation on how to handle a meeting of two subcommittees that would exceed quorum um, of the entire commission. Okay. Yes, Alex. Um, just Dan, I think if you if you post that as a meeting of the entire commission, then that solves that problem. Um, even though it, you know the, the entire commission is is invited, and you as long as you reach quorum, um, then then you just the topics will be those the the topics of those two committees uh, discussing. I know that you know, like the city council committees are actually posted as full council meetings. So that it's not a concern if um, enough counselors show up to reach the quorum of the council. Perfect. That's that that solves that main concern. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, and I'll look forward to hearing. Um, Alex, if you were going to do the document by yourself, what things would you? I'm asking this so that we might give you permission to do to put information in and begin to embed it without having to meet with the rest of us am i making sense so yes carol i'm trying to imagine uh how it might be for you alex trying to do that um, that append appendices without seeing the recommendation section. It oh, seems no. like there's got to be some correspondence there. Oh, I'm so, I, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm asking Alex to do the recommendation section. Oh, I see. Not the I see. Appendix. Section. I see. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not sure. I feel a bit daunted by that. Uh, but I, you know. Then let's talk. Want to may we take time now to sort of um do you have and able to share what so we sort of <clears throat> approved what we sent before as our preliminary committee recommendations for alternatives we had already done that and i think i feel like i'm asking to talk about the specific issues we were thinking of as alternatives. For instance, looking at different, different response for mental health calls, different response for substance abuse related calls, different. Those are the things that were there. We also had information about why are we doing this? And I'm not seeing that as part of this discussion. 
it's it's just what things we um i'm being flipped now so we would like a cahoots type model though we are interested in more peer peer supported or community based programs for care we are interested in a substance abuse treatment model that does not involve arrest and perhaps could move towards a non-police response. We are, um, I'm trying to think of what else we, I'm trying to remember what else. Th those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. I mean, am I going too far with saying those things or am I, I, I feel I'm trying to say what I think all of us have agreed to. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I, I, I agree with you, and I think the rest agree with you. I just want to do a time check. It's 8.53, according to my computer. Um, we also could give permission. Check. Tell me if I'm wrong, Alex. We could also give permission for two people to do this document together. Could we do that, Alex? That would have to be a posted meeting. Okay. Anything that we task more than one person with, which would be fine. You know, if, if two of us want to post a meeting and just hang out and on, on, on Zoom for a few hours uh, or whatever and work together, we can, we can do that. So that, that means that would be, would be posted at a subcommittee meeting, a full subcommittee meeting, but only the people working on that specific thing would show up. Uh, it couldn't be posted as a full subcommittee meeting. It would have to be a subcommittee of our subcommittee um, because we wouldn't reach quorum uh, with, with only two. So uh, we would just simply task, you know, me and one other person <laughs> Uh, and then we would have a work session that would happen to be public and yeah. posted. Sorry, I was I, I was looking at no, that was what I was laughing. Um, yeah, I understand that. It's, it's yeah. Um, I was going to suggest our next meeting being. Wednesday, March 3rd. The next meeting of the full group is March, uh, Tuesday, March 2nd. Um, one possibility is to have a small task committee, but the mm -hmm. earliest, we wouldn't be able to get permission for that. No, I'm looking at you now until if we t if we asked for a meeting tomorrow, the earliest it could occur would be Tuesday, March second, wouldn't it? Because they need forty eight business hours in order to post the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you could do well if you posted it tomorrow morning. You could have a meeting over the weekend. I think. So give you all day Thursday, all day Friday. So as long, as long as it was like posted first thing in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking it's Thursday. I'm I'm sorry. I forgot it. Today is Tuesday. I shouldn't be running a meeting right now. It's Wednesday. But... Okay. So should could we? So if we submitted a meeting time tomorrow, when's the earliest we could have a meeting? Friday, or Saturday? Mm, you need two. You need two business days. So Monday. So Monday, yeah, it wouldn't be uh, enough time unless. Sunday. No, you would be able to do Saturday because oh. you would have all business business day from Thursday, Thursday. all business day from Friday. Oh. So you oh, would be able you. to do it Saturday or Sunday. I I think there was a issue because you can't get in early enough necessarily on Thursday morning to have the full day of Thursday. I don't know. Noah probably knows a lot more. You, it's, it's a little, it's a little dicey when we call it 
so short, but I think that, you know, if I got it in, if it were approved by 10 a.m., then you could have a meeting two days later at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. um, technically. Um, but it all depends on when the clerk officially approves it, not just when I send it. So would Monday? Just Monday someone- seems... Monday seems safer, doesn't it? So you don't have to rearrange. Uh, Carol, check your email from the outreach subcommittee. Okay. Monday, um, policies is meeting 6.30 until 8. Um, what about Monday morning? I, I can't be there, I'm going to MGH. Um, Alex, when could you meet? Um, bef- before 11 on Monday or between noon and 4 p.m., I believe. I need to check my calendar to be sure. Um, I would be glad to meet with Alex just to the what this meeting would be about is making preparing a submission for um to the larger commission for um just the alternatives part not sort of responding to policy and procedure alternative recommendations under six um, that we would not be talking about appendices we would not be talking about anything else um, we would only be talking about which alternatives we would like to submit to the larger report. So if it's a, oh, you still need me to be there to have quorum. Do we need that? If we say this is a subcommittee of the subcommittee, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think you have to be there, right? If not, I'm fine. But if, if, if that's if that works. Can we do that, Alex, that from your understanding of how the world works? Yeah, I think I think if this this committee says you, Booker and Alex, have been tasked to form a subcommittee and work on this, then we I believe so. Um, I'm still a little concerned about I mean, I'll, I'll give it my best shot, but if, if um, I'm just looking over the preliminary report and thinking about what I would pull out and how I would frame it, um, and if, you know, there's um, some, if others want to take a particular section and kind of do a draft of that, and then Booker and I can try to that would, that would probably assist us. In that, would, that would really together. be helpful. Um, Which so, section you know, are you, do you have in mind? Well, you know, we each wrote kind of a, a different section and um, we could sort of pull out what we think are the primary recommendations from each of those sections and into a, a couple of paragraphs. Um, and submit that for, which would then be discussed at, at the meeting that Booker and I will have. Um, and then Booker and I will edit that. Yeah. Uh, that would, that would, prob- that would, I feel a little more confident mm-hmm. yeah, in that. Mm-hmm. So could I ask that? Um, so, first, um, is it okay? Um, we need a motion to form a subcommittee to meet to craft this document, and we would schedule ourselves to do it on Monday morning at 11 a.m., Alex? Uh, no, I'm, between 11 and noon is the only time I'm not available. Okay, so from 10 to 11. Um, what time would you like it to be? Um, that probably seemed, I mean, uh, 
afternoon would work better for me, but if that doesn't work for you, then um, I can I could do noon. Um, we could I could try to make that work. I'm I'm start working with patients at one p.m. So I just have to be careful about that. Okay. Um, Shall we say noon till one? Sure. Okay. That probably gives us a better chance of making sure that the uh, city clerk authorizes it as well. Okay. And in the meantime, um, I will send a copy of the preliminary report that we already submitted to NOAA to send to Javier and Carol and Alex and I. So each of us can make edits mm -hmm. and let's have you send them to Noah mm -hmm. who will share them with us mm -hmm. so that Alex and I have a way of working with that. Is that okay? That's fine. Just to be clear, we're, we're to uh, look at the section that each of us wrote and um, either and just elaborate or edit edit the, the content that relates to recommendations. Yes. And then I see I just looked at the section that I had written and there it's just I got a bunch of references to different programs. I should just highlight that 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 that's what you might be pulling out and putting in appendices. Yeah. I just flag it, maybe do it in a different color or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is this subcommittee of the subcommittee instead of um, and the next? No, I think we should still plan to have a meeting on um, I think we I we were gonna plan to have a meeting on March third. Um, and hopefully we can go back to the six thirty PM start time and finishing at eight. Or do we have another meeting that we would be arguing with them? So spending in contracts um, tentatively wanted to plan something for 5.30 until 7.30 on the third. Also, maybe Dan could speak to whether the joint um, subcommittee might be on the table for this upcoming um, meeting. Um, yeah. That's what I have so far. Dan, is that something you have in mind or um, is that still? Yeah, that was, um, yeah, that's that's what um, we had talked about in the, the spending and subcontracts um, subcommittee was ways for us to do that. So um, I guess if we listed your meeting as a full commission meeting, um, and that way, our subcommittee could also attend. Um, so in other words, we would be doing a combined meeting on Wednesday the 3rd? Yeah, and it doesn't need to be the whole meeting as combined. <laughs> you know, we can, you know, we could meet and have like the combined part be part of it, you know, either the front or the back end. And then you could have the, the rest of the time. It's just a chance for us to sort of collaborate and like to fully collaborate to know what alternatives are coming up, um, how those might be framed, because that impacts sort of what we can say about, or where we can lend what we've learned about the budgets um, and funding opportunities and things like that. Um, Thank you, Dan, for saying those words. <laughs> um, Dan, say what time you would like the first meet the the um other all the other committee to meet and then we'll then i'm gonna suggest that we say here's how much here's where we want to overlap and here's because i think that there's work we'll need to do outside of that committee work yeah um so i guess the i mean i guess i'm not the chair for the spending and subcontracts committee mm -hmm. so i don't want to 
I don't want to overstep or step on Josie's toes. Um, we had sort of left it open so that we could schedule our meeting based on that. So originally we were thinking we would just schedule the meeting at the same time. Okay. Um, as, as whatever the overlap was or whatever the chunk is um, of time. But if we do a full commission meeting, just make it whatever time. And then our, our part in that will be, you know, whatever agenda item. <laughs> Can I suggest that our alternatives me meeting on March 3rd will begin at 6.30 and end at eight? And if the, the other committee wants to overlap that time, we can do that. Does that work, Dan? Um, I mean, it's just that if we have a, if we're doing a joint session, we have, I have any confirmation from the solicitor about like what happens if there are too many commissioners at that meeting or we need to list it as a full commission meeting. I see. Because we would reach quorum pretty quickly with our, with our group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Alex. And if it's a full commission meeting, we have to stay at quorum or above uh, in order to uh, continue. So it's a, sort of a, we have to either all stick together or be separate. I mean, I think our, I don't, again, I don't want to step on Josie's toes. Uh, I think that Josie, Michael, and myself could also just stay for, even though we wouldn't necessarily be part of and we could just listen in <laughs> to the other part. So we would still be present, even though we wouldn't necessarily actively be contributing beyond um, beyond that first point. Um, I guess what we could do is also, I, I would ask our committee to keep Wednesday, March 3rd open. And the format of that meeting might evolve and it may be a full commission meeting or um, just our subcommittee. Um, so I, I'm not sure how we'll work this out. Um, yes, Carol. What counts for the quorum? Are you counting uh, like, is it gonna be like the whole commission, the whole, the 630 meeting? Will that be contingent on the membership of the whole commission or just our subcommittee? I ask that because I'm scheduled for a COVID vaccine at 520 and I might be in and out in 10 minutes, but then I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't, it, it's not gonna be 10 minutes. They're supposed to ask you to hang out for a while. <laughs> um, well, in any event, I, I didn't wanna mess up our quorum. So that's yeah. why I'm asking. Um, can I ask all of you to hold Wednesday, March 3rd open? And I think um, if you'll give permission, I have a feeling Dan and Josie and I need to do some discussion offline to try to schedule this and make it work. All right. Um, yeah. um, it, are you? <sighs> Is that? Um, Alex, is that okay for you? Yeah, my schedule is open that evening. Okay, Javier, is that okay for you? Um, I think Carol might be indisposed and hopefully that will be okay for her. Uh, what I'm asking is that you all hold a time from 6.30 until 8.30 open. And it may be just our committee and it may be a combination of, of some way, shape or form. I guess I um, have to post everything by Friday this week. Okay. And hopefully Dan and Josie and I can figure that out. Yeah. And I think when we get the feedback from the solicitor as well, that should be a pretty, that'll inform that too. Because if we can just have the two subcommittees meet, <laughs> um, you know, and not hit court, like, I don't, it, there's still a couple of things like we could, you know, in theory, just have someone from our subcommittee not attend and that would keep us below quorum too. Um, but that's not really the spirit of, of the law there. So okay. trying to figure out how to comply best. And so Dan, when you and I talk, we'll 
I, I need to understand better what it is we need to collaborate on in terms of this meeting. Um, and so I can inform the committee and prior to that meeting of what it is we're going to need to collaborate on. Yeah. Um, okay. So our, you know, I'm sorry that they aren't paying us, uh, us enough for this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, are there other thoughts we should be moving towards a germ? So what we have decided there, Alex and I will be meeting at one o'clock. All of you will be asked to comment about um, the work that was done on the first document so that um, Alex and I are able to represent our, all of our thoughts in terms of what we'll submit to the larger committee. And on Wednesday, March 3rd, we will have a meeting. The question will be, is it just our committee or will it be a mixed um, uh, uh, two subcommittees are a part of the larger commission. Does that all, all of that make sense? Yes, Alex. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So I would make a motion that we form a working group of the alternatives to policing subcommittee, which will meet uh, 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 of, of me uh, uh, and Booker, um, which will meet on Monday, March 1st at noon. Second. Um, are there any questions or debate about that motion? Noah, can you call us to a vote for that? Booker? Yes. Javier? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Carol? Yes. Motion carries. Um, are there any other questions or discussion? Thank you all again for putting up with all of this difficulty, but um, this is actually a sort of fun and important. I just sort of keep telling myself that. Um, and I feel that after each meeting. Are there any other questions before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Is there someone who would like to move towards adjournment? Uh, I move a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. May we have a vote, Noah? Yes. Booker? Yes. Javier? Yes, Javier? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex? Yes. Carol? Yes. All right. <laughs> Motion carries. We are about to adjourn. Thank you, yeah. Cynthia and Dan, for joining us. Um, thank you for being here, Yaping. Um, thank you all of you for your input um, into this process. Good night. Yes, thank you. Good all. evening. Good night.